In 2011, professional bowler Scott Norton entered into rarefied territory when he came out publicly, the first person in his sport to do so. He gained another distinction later on that year when he became the first active male professional athlete in the United States to marry his partner. Now, this has been a fantastic year for Scott. He's fourth in overall points in the PBA Tour, and he's fifth in earnings. But with the Supreme Court about to rule on Proposition 8, I caught up with Scott and his partner, Craig Woodward, to talk to them about their marriage, their relationship, and what the overturning of Proposition 8 would mean to them. I'm Scott Norton, and I'm a professional bowler. I'm Craig Woodward. I'm a professional bowler's husband. I was still in law school my last year and I actually wasn't looking for anything at the time uh, because I knew I was moving back to Southern California and just happened to be online and saw this one pop up. <laughs> I felt a connection with Scott immediately and I know it did take a while to come around and I finally asked to marry him but, but the connection I felt was instant and I felt I could tell him anything about me. It was quick and intense and never backed off. So when I met him, it didn't take me very long to realize that that was what this was. So the fact that we complement each other so well in so many different ways is what to me makes us special because I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to marry someone like me. <laughs> Thank goodness someone else does. Ah, oh, the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> People are still talking about it. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty <laughs> fun affair. Uh, I, we had it in Laguna Beach at the Surf and Sand Hotel, and it, I mean, they had a beautiful uh, terrace that was right over the, the beach and over the water, and at the end of the aisle is right there over the beach, and you couldn't ask for a more perfect setting than Laguna Beach. I'm all for, you know, the traditional wedding, and you know, it's very serious, and it's a very serious commitment, and it shouldn't be demeaned by a circus, but at the same time, you're there to celebrate, so why not have a lot of fun while you're while you're taking this huge step? <laughs> I barely got my first line out of my vows out and I teared up a little bit. Uh, it was a very special day. Uh, it was so nice to have all my family there. My uh, Actually, the minister uh, I grew up, uh, the church I grew up in, she actually told my mom and my mom told her about me that um, if Craig ever finds someone, I'd, I'd like to do the ceremony if you'd like me to. And, so we called her up and she was just, oh, yes, yes, yes. So and she was she incredible. Came down, yeah. So when I came out in 2011, it wasn't really for me. It was for people who might not know, for kids who might be struggling with coming out, for people with aspirations to be any kind of professional athlete or professional of any kind or just be successful in life. That it really makes no difference if you're gay or straight or black or white or male or female, that you can, if you work hard, and you put in the time that you can be successful at just about whatever you put your mind to. Uh, the sponsors have been amazing, uh, starting with Ebonite and now more specifically Columbia 300. They've just, they've been so supportive. They've been such a great support system along with everyone else and it's so difficult to make it out there without uh, sponsors who support you fully and I just want to thank them for, for taking a chance on me. <laughs> The kiss heard around the world. Did you, uh, did you guys think about that when it happened? No, nope. uh, and it wasn't my doing. It was actually uh, my best friend Missy's doing. Uh, he was thinking of coming out, and he was kind of like, I don't know if I should. I don't know if I should. What's the etiquette? Like, yeah, I, I don't know, know if I need to, if I should run out in the, the approach. You know, now that it's over, and Missy basically shoved him out in the approach and said, Go. And it was just. <laughs> As natural as could be. I mean, what else are you gonna do when your when your spouse comes up onto the approach right after you win a big tournament? And suddenly, here I am, about to bowl team trials, and it's it blows up into this thing. And then the Huffington Post wants to get me on their the live podcast. It was great. It was what I was hoping it would be, which was you know some recognition not only for the sport but also for the community. I, when this, when Prop 8 happened and, you know, all that in California, um, 08, I believe, or 708, I, at the time, thought, you know, this is our next civil, you know, step for, for you know, gay people, but I thought, it's not going to happen, I don't think the country's going to move that quickly, I am absolutely ecstatic about how quickly it's just caught on. Marriage equality is hugely important, but 
and and it'll mean a lot when we get to call each other married but we call each other that now and we feel that we're married now and we want the recognition from the state and the federal government and I don't wish to place no emphasis on that because it's hugely important and obviously not just for us but for the community as a whole but I consider us married as is now because we had a ceremony with all and declared our love in front of all our family and friends and and have a monogamous committed relationship where we have open communication and we love each other dearly if that's not a marriage, I really don't know what is.